Hey everyone, thanks for joining today's video. Today we'll be talking about short call options versus long put options and looking at what the difference would be between going short on a call option, meaning selling a call option, versus going long on a put option, meaning buying a put option. This is going to be an introductory video as part of a series aimed at helping you understand some of the basics and foundational terminology you'll need to know as you get comfortable learning about, talking about, and eventually trading option strategies. We'll be looking at the difference between buying, also known as going long, and selling, also known as going short, as well as the difference between call options and put options. So I have the SPY ETF pulled up in Thinkorswim. This is the one year one day chart as well as some indicators down here. What we're going to be doing right away is going into the trade tab. I did want to point out a couple basic things about the options chain before we actually go into selling versus buying. So for today's example, we're going to be pulling up the seven day to expiration SPY option chain for January 2nd, 2024. So a couple things about the option chain. For Thinkorswim, you're going to see calls on the left and you're going to see puts on the right. In most trading platforms or options, this is going to be similar. Uh, this is the general user experience, but you can always customize things. Um, in my screen here for this option chain, I have a couple different columns. Um, I'm showing all strikes. The expiration date is in the middle, strike is in the middle, but I have open interest, the delta, bid, and ask going from left to right in calls and right to left on puts. As far as options trading goes, volume is something that's going to be important to look at. Um, so for open interest, you're going to see numbers here ranging from zeros to in the thousands. So what this is telling you is at any one time uh, for the January 2nd 475 call option, there are 3,581 contracts open at this very time. So that's important because you want to have liquidity in your options trading. Think about if you're buying and you want to get out of a contract by selling, it's going to be a lot easier to do that in the options that are trading in the thousands versus the options that have open interest in the zeros because no one's interested in those options contracts. The delta column, that's going to be telling you at any given time here what the probability is of that options contract expiring in the money so if you're going to be buying an options contract you want it to expire in the money if you're going to be selling an options contract you are going to want it to expire out of the money so you can see these ones are out of the money right now um, in the dark shaded in the purple shaded these are currently in the money so just to point out one example here, if I were to be looking at the 29 Delta, this is 479 strikes January 2nd. Right now, there is a 70% chance these will expire out of the money and a 30% chance they will expire in the money. If you're looking at some of the currently in the money options, uh, looking at the 468, there is an 82% chance this will continue to be in the money um, at expiration date January 2nd. Conversely, an 18% chance this will fall out of the money before uh, the January 2nd expiration date. Bid and ask. Um, if you're clicking on an ask, that is going to bring up a single buy contract. And if you're looking at the bid, clicking on that, bid is equated to selling that options contract. And the difference between the bid, the bid price and the ask price is sometimes called the bid ask spread. We wanna be looking at options with a tight bid ask spread so that we're not giving up any of that value back to the market. So let's look at two different trade setups that both have a, the same 
bias on the market, a bearish bias, but can be executed in two different ways with two different risk profiles. These two strategies, short call versus long put or selling a call versus buying a put. So we're looking at SPY here to, for the uh, January 2nd, 2024 expiration, seven days expiration. Let's look at two comparable options here. So to do that, we're gonna look for a put option and a call option with the same delta. So looking on the put side on the right, you see one here with 0.29. Let's see if we can find one on the call option. Yeah, 0.30. So 30 delta and 29 delta, that's close enough. These are the two options we're gonna look at for this one. So on the call side, a short call would have that bearish bias. Let's look at that. That would be selling a call, 479 strike 30 delta. So let's take a look and see what that would look like. So Maximum loss here, if SPY gets out of control and falls down to zero, that could be infinite. Or, or go, sorry, uh, in this situation, goes up uh, infinitely as it could. That's a big max loss. Max profit, that's going to be the premium that you collect as the premium seller. So think about acting as the insurance agency, selling or collecting the premium. That is what you can take away as a profit. But if something unexpected or unlikely happens, you could be out quite a bit of money. So let's analyze this trade real quick. Looking at the Y axis, this is your profit and loss in the thousands. Uh, X axis here is going to be the strike price. This price slice is going to be your break even, which is at 477. So having your bearish bias you want the security, in this case, SPY, to fall or stay below 477. Currently in this situation is trading over just 475. So you see this teal line following along the x-axis, that's your maximum gain and also your, your maximum loss here. As we talked about, SPY could rise infinitely and your loss could fall infinitely. So we'll come back to this in just a second. But let's compare another option here with the same bearish bias. This would be buying a put with 30 delta 472 strike for SPY January 2nd, 2024. Oops. <clears throat> See on this trade, your max profit, well, it's not infinite, but that's quite a bit more than you know what your max loss is here. 119, that's the premium you're paying, and your max profit has the high upside on this one. So let's actually go over to analyze. And it's you know, if you look at this this risk profile versus the last one here, you know, it's really just kind of the inverse of that where you have a, you know, what you want to happen is you want the strike price to go below 477. And for that to happen, your profit rises really exponentially at this point, but your maximum loss, if the strike price goes above 477, <clears throat> that is uh, capped at $119. So when you look at your probability of breaking even at this point, so this is looking at buying that put option with a 30 delta, you're gonna be looking at 60% probability that you will uh, remain profitable and 40% that you're going to lose what could be in this situation, $119. So since we used two different comparable options for this, for this, uh, for this trade setup, it's going to be a similar, a similar break even, but different things at stake here. So, seventy-nine percent or sixty-nine percent, seventy percent chance you're going to be profitable, and this trade is going to work out in your favor if you are 
selling that call that put option at $120 premium. And in this situation, there's also a 30% chance that you could that you're you're going to lose money. Um, you know this this strike going above 480 in this situation. So two different risk profiles, really just the inverse of things, right? Limited downside on this, limited upside on this, uh, unlimited downside, limited downside, unlimited upside. So you can see the differences here in going short versus going long. Now, as we talked about in one of the other videos, you know, selling a an uncovered or non-secured put um, in many in many types of accounts, that's illegal uh, because your max loss, you, don't, you might not have the capital to cover that. Um, you could um, have an option where you do something called the cash secured put, which we'll look at in another video in, this, um, in the next series. And that is a way to limit your profit, but also limit your loss there for puts. This cash secured put a strategy is actually you know, paired with covered calls to be part of what's called the wheel strategy. Uh, here's another link to that video. As you begin to understand the differences in calls and puts and going long and going short, when you're ready, that's a great next video to really start to understand how do you put these together in a longer term, uh, but simple uh, option selling strategy.